Inc. Oceanography News. In this first episode of D2 Oceanography News, we're going to start out by finding out what caused an ice shelf 20 times the size of Manhattan to collapse. The story comes from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in Science News Magazine. A former slab of floating glacial ice with an area about 20 times that of Manhattan. In 2022, it suddenly fragmented into icebergs, which then drifted apart over the course of several days. Quote, nobody was thinking it was going to go, says Catherine Walker, a glaciologist with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in Massachusetts, who led the new study. It wasn't even melting that rapidly, unquote. While perusing satellite images to examine another nearby ice shelf, she noticed the 1,200 square kilometer Conjure ice shelf was present in a photo taken March 10th of that year, but missing in another one taken just six days later. So began a two-year effort to understand what destroyed it. Polar meteorologist Jonathan Willey, along with Walker and 50 other scientists, reported an important clue earlier this year. A powerful storm passed along the coast during that time tilting the sea surface up and down a fraction of a degree. As the ice shelf flexed, it broke along existing cracks. Powerful winds then pried the fragments apart. We have every reason to think that these storms will become more intense in the future as Earth warms, says Willie, of the Institute for Atmospheric and Climate Science. Those stronger storms could damage the protective ice shelves that fringe Antarctica's coastline. But for Conger Ice Shelf, the story is more complicated. The new study shows it was already in bad shape when the storm hit. Hongjur was in an area with generally cold air, and melting on its underside was driven by seawater. Looking through archival satellite measurements, Walker and collaborators found that the floating shelf had gradually thinned from a thickness of about 200 meters in 94 to 130 meters in 2021. Satellite radar measurements suggest the cracks permeated its thin, brittle ice, allowing salty ocean water to seep in and further weaken it. The Condra ice shelf had long been stabilized because it was pressed against an island 50 kilometers off the coast, but as the ice shelf thinned, it became too weak to withstand those compressive forces. The island became a slow-motion rock coming through a windshield, Walker says. Cracks spiderwebbed out from the ice shelf's point of contact with the island. The new study reports, then on March 2022, it broke free of the island, leaving it unsupported in the face of the approaching storm. Congress collapse won't noticeably impact sea level because the glaciers that had stabilized are small, but the fact that it happened in this supposedly stable part of Antarctica worries me, Molorgum says. Most of the waters in this area have been historically quite cold, but small changes began around 2010. Ocean currents shifted, allowing water that was 0.6 degrees Celsius warmer than before to intrude toward the coastline. Researchers reported last year, this may have hastened the Condra ice shelf's demise. More worryingly, it could also destabilize a massive glacier just 130 kilometers to Conger's west. The Denman Glacier holds enough ice to raise global sea levels by 1.5 meters if all of it slid into the ocean. It alone contains the equivalent of nearly half the ice in West Antarctica. As Denman flows off the coastline, it grinds between a floating ice shelf on one side and an island on the other, slowing its advance into the ocean. But the ice that connects it to those stabilizing structures is slowly thinning and weakening. It could eventually break free and speed up. The sector of the East Antarctica ice sheet has been very stable, Morlogum says. Some computer simulations predicted East Antarctica might even gain some mass over the next century. But if Denman and its neighbors destabilize, then that completely changes the picture. If you wanted to measure the interface between the bottom of a glacier and the ocean water, you could use a ice-tethered profile. Turns out D2 Inc. makes the perfect CTD for ice tethered profilers for measuring down through the ice to measure this interface between ocean water and glacier. You just simply slide our instrument down through a hole in the ice and it can measure the interface as it goes down and descends and records the data and then brings it back up so you can extract it. You can see here where these ice tethered profilers have been deployed in the Arctic Ocean. 
In other science polar related news, the U.S. Coast Guard has contracted offshore service vessels to provide the MV IVIC, a commercially available icebreaker, to support missions in polar regions. Primary role is to enhance its operational presence in the Arctic until the service's future fleet of new polar security cutters arrive. Built in 2010, the icebreaker features 360 foot length capacity for 60 personnel in a helicopter and engines capable of 15 knots in open water and 5 knots on ice. Research set to transform our understanding of how the ocean breathes. A 2.5 million pound project will provide unprecedented detail in ocean mixing and improve climate models. Project led by University of Southampton and the National Oceanography Center, NOC, is set to transform our understanding of how the ocean breathes, storing heat and greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. Ocean scientists will deploy sensors on high board tech floats to provide unprecedented detail on how the ocean breathes through mixing. Tiny turbulent movements that pull heat, water, and chemicals from its surface down into the deep. This ventilation helps to regulate Earth's climate, buffering against the impacts of human-induced climate change. Dr. Fernandez Castro says, These profiling floats have been used since the 2000s to measure the temperature and salinity of the ocean, as well as other properties to help with forecasting and modeling. But they were incapable of observing mixing until now, so it's exciting to deploy them in significant numbers for this purpose. The data captured will generate the first comprehensive observation-based global database measuring mixing roles in the ocean ventilation. This detailed new understanding will feed into the next generation of ocean climate models, improving their ability to simulate the ocean's role in storing heat and greenhouse gases. Dr. Alex Megan at the National Oceanography Center, a co-investigator on the project, says, Combining the new data with existing hydrographic profiles from the Global Argo program, we can reconstruct mixing over the past 25 years over the global ocean to provide much more accurate mixing estimates. We'll then use a model called NEMO, which is the ocean component of the UK's contribution to the Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, to use our improved estimates of mixing to give a much clearer picture of how ocean ventilation regulates our climate. The next bit of maritime news comes from Crow Industries, James Crowell. Did someone say beachhead? Crow Industries has teamed up with Havoc AI to cover the ground and maritime domains for national security and defense. Two weeks ago, we demonstrated Fenris coordinating with their autonomous boats as a ground sea robotic team, allowing one operator to supervise them all using the same command and control platform. As we've seen in Ukraine, the future battle space will lie heavily on multi-domain swarms of uncrewed assets, combining autonomous ground, maritime, and air robots in unique ways to provide outsized capabilities to our armed forces. Over the coming weeks, we'll be posting more about our UGV-USV collaborations with Havoc AI, so be sure to follow Crow Industries page for more information. More maritime AI news comes from Peter Simons de Montfort, design director, who says they've had successful sea trials of their new stealth patrol vessels. Thrilled to share an exciting milestone in the development of our stealth patrol vessels. On the very first attempt of our sea trials, we achieved an impressive 40 knots with detuned engines. Proof of our team's precision engineering and relentless dedication. The waterline match predictions perfectly, a testament to the synergy between virtual design simulations and real-world performance. This alignment between expectations and reality is a relief and a celebration. Highlights the cutting-edge design tools and expertise that went into this project. Up next, a rigorous 40-day endurance test at 6 knots. This will provide critical data for sustained operational capabilities, further validating the vessel's design for extended missions and eventually USV use. Also from the world of autonomous maritime news, we have the Dive XL, the extra-large autonomous undersea vehicle XL-AUV is setting new global standards for vehicles of its class. The Dive XL recently completed a 100-hour single voyage, the longest ever for an XL AUV. Achievement is just the beginning. By 2025, Dive XL will embark on a 1,000 nautical mile fully submerged mission, paving the way for the multi-thousand mile operational deployments. 
DiveXL represents the pinnacle of innovation in maritime autonomy, offering survivability, fully submerged operations for extended missions in contested environments, adaptability, modular payouts for ISR strike and more, ensuring mission versatility. Reducibility, rapid scalable production at our Rhode Island facility, delivering affordable systems at the scale the U.S. and allies need. Already missionized for the Royal Australian Navy's Ghost Shark program, DiveXL is redefining what is possible for undersea platforms as the U.S. and its allies face increasing maritime threats. Scalable autonomous solutions like DiveXL are essential to maintaining strategic advantage, and companies like D2 will be here if DiveXL needs a conductivity temperature depth meter. In other maritime related news, the RV Endeavor is on the move again for crews EN723 URI GOES. Chris Roman is testing a new NSF funded stealthy vertical profiling vehicle, visual and acoustic mesopelagic profiler for interdisciplinary research, Vampire. With colleagues from Arizona State University, ASU Bermuda Institute of Science, and Stony Brook School of Maritime and Atmospheric Sciences, and the National Science Foundation. RV Endeavor spends 200 days a year at sea supporting researching and training for URI, GSO, and global scientists. This weekend, it began its transit to the Bermuda Institute of Ocean Sciences, stepping in for the RV Atlantic Explorer on the Bermuda Atlantic Time Series study, the BATS Cruises. And on these cruises is D2 equipment being field tested. So thank you very much to the crew of the RV Endeavor for their help. Here are some of the pictures of the crew from the RV Endeavor that were from the LinkedIn posts that are out there performing the BATS Cruise and operating our D2 Incorporated Connectivity Temperature Depth Sensor. To wrap up the first episode of D2 Inc. Oceanography News, I thought I would show you this video from the RV Endeavor as it states, a remarkable team effort by University of Rhode Island URI GSO's Marine Operations Team. Their diverse skill set blends on land and at sea to empower world-class educators, students, and scientists. So they've produced a video that allows you to take a glimpse into what life is like for them. So I figured it would be a good way to bring people into the first episode of D2 Inc. Oceanography News by showing you what it's like to be an oceanographer on the RV Endeavor. Please enjoy. Pretty much each time we go out on a trip with a different group of scientists, helping them get themselves and their equipment um, integrated to the ship. Software, hardware, system integration work, things like that. I'd say that's my specialty. So when I talk to somebody who asks me, well, what do you do? I can say anything from handling lines to raise and lower equipment in and out of the water. I also stand watch. And that could be, you know, sitting on station doing scientific work, or it could be transiting, you know, avoiding different contacts that are on the radar. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on social media on Twitter, at D2 Incorporated. Visit our site, d-2.com.